my talk today is about feedback loops in DevSecOps. So I will be very, very similarly talk about the process and what are the challenges, but I will try to propose some solutions for one of the challenges that Gary presented, or maybe even more than one. Uh, but, the, but the talk will be very, uh, very connected to the previous one. So that's that's perfect. Thank you organizers also for, for putting them together. So at the beginning, because uh, because it's 20, 20 years of OWASP, I just want to welcome you with this small terminal that I will be presenting my demo. Everyone, everyone sees, everyone is there. I don't like the presentation online because I don't see people. I cannot, I cannot talk to you guys, but I hope it will be good and you will, will enjoy it. Of course, this is not the real demo yet. Let me, let me go to the, uh, to the presentation first. So as, uh, as it was presented, I'm Daniel. I'm working currently in Equinix uh, as a senior manager of product security. I'm running the team in Poland. And Poland, uh, everyone is asking if the, if the background is uh, the real picture. Yeah, this is Poland. This is how the forest in Poland can look like. But uh, unfortunately, not this time of the year. It was a couple months back. Now we are coming to the, to the mm, uh, more, more gray area and more gray uh, part of the year, unfortunately. So mm, I'm the leader of OWASP Poland, and I'm also mm, a programmer. I was a programmer for many years, then I switched to security. I do like presenting. I do like uh, doing the trainings and, uh, and uh, playing with people uh, with security and so on. But as you can also see, I like docs, and this Weimaraner on the screen is my my doc, which I love, and which is a perfect companion for the life. If you if you look for the doc, I really recommend. So, what we'll be talking today about uh, about DevOps, DevSecOps, uh, cooperating with developers, doing uh, security during the development process, and trying to solve the issues that I'm seeing in the market. So. Uh, everyone is saying that we have DevOps, so we have DevSecOps, so we have something else, so we have security automation, mm, deployment automation, CICD. Uh, really, like if you talk to the companies, everyone is very major and everyone is everyone is doing something. But then you come and you see, or even you are the part of the team and you are trying to extend it, and it seems like our current tools are not working yet. Or yeah, we have a lot of tools, as Gary said, but we have a lot of mess also, or a lot of noise from those tools, right? So mm, there are some challenges in the DevSecOps and there are some challenges in DevOps. DevOps, it's not something that you can introduce by providing a new tool. And I do not have this, <laughs> sorry, Martin, if you are there, but I do not have this, mm, this slide, maybe I should. But uh, uh, but uh, there is a very popular slide like a tools, people, and processes, right? So this is really in security very important. And uh, if you have only tools and people, but you don't have process, then it doesn't work. And you have only process and tools, but you don't have people, it doesn't work. And so on and so on. So the tools are not everything. And uh, I think you should have enough tools to do the job, but not man not not more than you need, right? That's probably the issue here. So let me start with the CICD so everyone can understand what we are talking today about. Uh, so CICD is a continuous integration and continuous deployment. So you have a code and uh, actually at Aquinix and in the normal, the normal life, I'm trying to mm, automate as many things as possible, right? So our approach is to have everything as a code or at least uh, at least what can be as a code that, that it's as a code. So the pipeline as a code, deployment as a code, security as a code in a way. I will talk, talk about it also later. So the code is a beginning of everything and uh, you have some, some repository. It can be GitLab, GitHub, SVN, whatever you have, right? Commits, then you have continuous integration pipeline and continuous deployment pipeline. Uh, in my demo later on, the uh, CI and CDI build and 
build and deployment will be one step, but that's not proper. It's just simple app that I will show you. So, so that's that's uh, what I prepared just just quickly. But it, normally it should be two different st steps. And why? Mostly because the deployment part uh, is needing a lot of uh, credentials or a lot of accesses, and the building part does not need it, right? So you should probably separate those two. And uh, there are different different security tests that can be done in those uh, steps. But let me let me go through the dev process first. So very popular DevOps. DevOps, as I said, it's not a process; it's a culture. You need to you need to think like a DevOps. You need to try to work like a DevOps, but not DevOps team. It should be developers. It should be security. It should be uh, ops team. Everyone should think how to work as a DevOps, nor not like, you know, we have a DevOps team, so we have DevOps in the company. That's probably the most the most critical part to understand and to have this mindset. So, uh, but even if you don't have DevOps or we don't have DevOps, or even if you don't know what is DevOps, the dev process looks very similar in many cases. So there is some planning done. There is an implementation, building process, testing process, right? So this is like, you have a feature, feature idea, which you plan, you groom, uh, you implement. So the development is done. Then you build and you test. You have probably QAs, maybe automation tests, whatever else. Then you release, deploy, operate, and monitor, right? So the deployment is uh, critical. You can deploy it to production. You can deploy it to different different environments, and you need to you need to monitor what is what what is it doing. Then you do again the same, right? It it can be it can be every week, every two weeks, every one month, every half a year, depending on your on your agility or the process in the company. Uh, so is the security really needed there? Uh, DevOps as a mindset and as a, mm, as a, mm, mm, not a process, but the culture has security already built in, right? So do we need really security in the development process? Yes, we do. And what kind of security we need or what kind of security we can put there? Everyone, if you, if you see security, uh, field for last, I don't know, five, 10 years, everyone started to talk about shifting left. Then everyone talked about shifting left. Now it's not even shifting left, these are DevOps. And uh, what does it mean? That means that you can put some of the tests on the dev site and you can put some of the tests in your, in your uh, CI CD pipeline. So in your building process and deployment process, and it will help you to get security feedback or security findings at then early stages or earlier stages. So you can do a SAS, which is static application security testing, and it can contain many types of testing actually, because SAS is not just a code analysis, it's a secret scanning, it's software composition analysis. So all the dependencies that you are having, uh, let's, let's assume you're using NPM, right? You download one package and NPM downloads 10,000 packages for you, you don't even know it. Some of them can be vulnerable. Some of them can be uh, not supported anymore. Uh, some of them can be old. And you need to live with that. You even don't know about it if you don't scan it or you don't you don't test it. So that's that's what SCA is. Then secure code analysis, which is main part of SAS. Uh, what SAS can help you with can help you find very low hanging fruits or very easy uh, easy code bugs like. SQL injection, like some misconfigurations. If you scan your YAML files, you can see also the deployment problem in, in SAS. So there are many, many different occasions that SAS can help you. Then most of the applications right now are using microservices or at least are building Docker and or some other containers. So they are containerized. And this is another layer of vulnerabilities that you can introduced to your application. So co container vulnerability assessment is a kind of kind of important right now in the process. Uh, then if you have the application, it's already running, you can do a dynamic application security testing, which can again, give you a low hanging fruit or even some more com comprehensive issues uh, as 
I don't know, path traversals or some cache deceptions or just simple issues like a cookie without secure flag, which is very popular in all the all the findings that you got from the from the vendors when you have a mm, penetration testing from other companies, right? And to not stop on the testing, you should also have some more static or even even dynamic testing when you have the application. So you can do infrastructure testing. You can do compliance testing. What does it mean compliance testing? Uh, let's say you are using AWS and you can test from different tools, open source and not open source. How does your uh, your configuration of AWS or any other environment um, uh, compares to the different compliance like ISO, like sys hardening, like whatever it is like. So this can be done without you doing that every week. It can be done in the pipeline. Every time someone deploys the application, you get the report and that's automated. But there is a noise, right? Because you got the report and someone needs to analyze it. So what else? And by the way, if you want to know some SaaS tools, DAS tools, or something like that, there are a lot of good materials in OWASP. You go to free open, free open source application security tools, and there will be a link to the SaaS applications. Those are not only open source. Some of them are commercial. Some of them are open source. So there are, there are a list in OWASP that you can use. I really recommend OWASP has a lot of good, good materials for you guys. Those are the examples that I have taken from Sounds. There is a Sounds post, uh, poster about the application security. So you see that even, even from those examples, there are like, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 of different tools that you can use in your pipeline and in your environment to get uh, data about your current security posture. So there was something like OWASP BevSecOps project. And this is a simple pipe that shows you what can be done in a different stages of the development. So SAS does infra scanning compliance check. But let me put that into the DevOps process. So <clears throat> we'll go one by one and see where which component can be, can be used. So you have a planning. During the planning, you can meet with the team and you can do a threat modeling. Threat modeling will be not automated probably, uh, at least right now without any artificial intelligence that i don't know uh you cannot do a good threat modeling without people right so people will be meeting seeing the architecture talking about it and maybe you can spot on some vulnerabilities that can be even found and fixed before the development is started then developers are trying to do the best and their job to get everything working as fast as possible and as soon as possible deploy the code so they are using different techniques and different uh, languages to get the things done and first the obvious thing is that they need some secrets to access the database they need some secrets to access the environment they need some secrets to access the uh, to authorize versus different uh, different uh, apis so <clears throat> they are putting secrets into into the code because it's easier, it's faster. So we need to scan for the secrets. And uh, on the other side, from security perspective, you should help the team. So you don't need only to scan the secrets, but you should propose something like a vault or uh, some other some other um, secure storage for secrets, for credentials, so they can use. Uh, there are plenty of them, open source, not open source. Again, you can see on OWASP, or you can just look for the secret storage solution in the Google, and it will be there. Uh, then, as I said, you can scan the code and you can check the open source dependencies, which is very important. After after you do the do the development, you build the application. Every time you build the application, you have the new Docker's or any other container image. So you need to scan it because you can put some vulnerabilities into this container even without uh, without having those vulnerabilities into the application itself, right? Because your container has an OS, has some dependencies by itself, and if you don't uh, if you don't uh, patch it, if you don't uh, update it, it can introduce a lot of different vulnerabilities to your to your application. Then you do uh, then you deploy the application so you can do dynamic application scan infrastructure scan uh, 
you can do a penetration test. And this is a very important part of the process because you cannot automate it. Whenever someone is telling you that penetration tests can be automated, you can skip that and uh, you can go further because that's, that's, not the, that's not the case. It cannot be done. You need manual penetration tests to see how the application behaves in the edge cases. You need someone with very good uh, understanding of the application to go through and try, try to hug it uh, in the malicious way. Uh, then you can do compliance check, as I said, and continuous monitoring is a crucial part of the operation side. And as a DevSecOps manifesto says, you need, I mean, you should go into the security as a code, right? So you should go into the way that you have all the security tools managed by code. And why? Uh, I will tell. I will show you a small demo of uh, Django NV, which is a vulnerable Python application, and I will be using GitHub Actions as a, as my CI and CD. Uh, this can be Jenkins. This can be I don't know some other some other thing like GitLab uh, GitLab uh, pipelines or whatever it's uh, is it called. So you can you can use different tools mm, just to check that I'm not doing uh, that I'm not cheating. There is nothing running on the 8,000 port here. And so uh, so my my pipeline, I hope you see it even if it's dark. Uh, my pi pipeline is right in a GitHub Actions, uh, which uh, consists of secret check, code check, dependency check, which is SAST. Then I build and deploy the application and I do dynamic application security testing using OWASP ZAP. I really recommend to do this part of the part of the um, security testing because many people many people just using Dust as a last step in the pipeline. Just a, you know, oh, I run my code. Can you do a Dust for me? So you know, some person needs to go to the to the um, tool, run the tool, analyze the results, and go back. This is very important, and I really recommend to have this dust as a full dust dynamic application security testing, uh, which will take like 40, 50 minutes. And that's pretty cool to have it. You can do it before every release or before every deployment, and that's enough. But for a simple testing, you can use Zap baseline, which takes about two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, depending on the application. So you should have some rules. For me, the rule is if the tool is taking more than 10 or 15 minutes, you don't use it in the pipeline because it's not it's not a pipeline anymore. You need to wait like one hour for the results, which is which is not good. Mm, okay. Uh, so this is the this is the pipeline. As you see, everything is a code, and those uh, those uh, mm, <coughs> rules for those tools. Actually, I'm using Trufflehawk for secret. Quay for uh, code check and the safety for for dependency check in Python. There are different different open source tools that you can use. All of those tools has uh, have some uh, configurations that you can do in the code as well. So you will see how many rules are run and what are the rules. So let me run it. I will use a simple. Uh, application called ACT, which is a GitHub Actions for localhost. It, it will not run in the GitHub, it will run locally, which is just faster and easier. So let me do a full full pipeline. You see that now that fast is running, right? And we have a lot of a lot of issues. Of course, you will have the you will have the mm, the report after after all. But there are a lot of different findings in this application, which are also false positives, as you see. Uh, but I will go to that later on. <clears throat> so this is SAST. Then, then we see the up thread, which is, uh, which is the code analysis. Uh, it was uh, using Bandit. Uh, there is a Bandit report and there is a there is safety with all the dependencies here. Uh, then there was build and deploy and the application is running, hopefully. Yes, the application is running. So while the application is running, we could do a dust. And the dust was done. 
there is some report uh, in the in their <clears throat> in this directory probably. Uh, let me see report JSON or something like that. Report it all. No, it's not that. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we have we have here the results. So you see there are vulnerable JS library. There is cookie no HTTP only flag. There is a cross domain JavaScript source file inclusion. Of course, you need to check it and uh, confirm, but you have some baseline, right? So now why I want to talk about the, about the uh, feedback loop, because the standard components of the process are, as you see, developer, security tool, and security team, right? So the first thing that you are doing is developer is running security tool. Or, I mean, developer is doing something, something that like commit, commit or push or merge request is running a security tool. Then it comes to security team and security team comes to the developer. So as I said, everyone was doing the shift left and uh, now the tools are reporting findings to developer itself. As you can see here, right? There are some reports, but most of the developers don't care about it or will don't uh, really don't have time to deep dive into those findings. So it will end up still doing to go into the security team. And, and that's the funny picture that I that I love, which shows what we are doing because we are shifting left, doing DevSecOps, uh, adding some more funny stuff to the names and you know, uh, everyone needs to do something cool. So we are doing DevOps, DevSecOps, DevSecOps and so on and so on. And that's, that's how the industry looks like, unfortunately. Uh, and we are missing some part of it, right? So, what I mean about feedback group is uh, if you get the data, gather the data, you have the results, you analyze it, and you act on them. Most of the acting is just reporting the issues to the developers. But what we should do, we should take the data, analyze them, and act on them also on our side. So let me show you the process that, uh, <clears throat> that I would like to have, or I think everyone should have. And first, Feedback loop is with false positive that most of the people do, right? So we have a lot of false positives here in the in the in the scanner in the secret scanners, right? So the simple this, the simple fix for that is I see that most of them are in the static content which is in task manager. So uh, so I I don't like to see them. I I would like to see only the the real real stuff or at least some that I'm interested in. So I can do a, a excluded file, which will be the config. And this will exclude if you see the if you see the workflow. Mm, I have here the excluded excluded takes that as an exclusion for the travel hook to not check those folders because there are no passwords in them and there are a lot of high entropy uh, mm, strings because of the commits, because of some images in base 64 and so on and so on. So if I do now act minus J SAST, or SAST, it will run for me only the fast part, which should, use the mm, truffle hook without the without those issues and you see that now we have only passwords right so passwords 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 no no false positives most of them are real great okay so so this loop is mostly in all the companies or in all the teams and that's perfect but now we have the second one so the proactive proactive loop you are doing penetration testing, you are doing security research, you are doing threat modeling. You should update your security tool to have more rules. And what I mean by more rules is uh, more checks, better checks, better organized checks, and so on and so on. And the overall process that I would like to propose or that we are trying to follow in, in, in our team is you have a different, different parts of the DevSecOps, which is design phase, which is code repository, CI, CD. And then we have this penetration tests, monitoring, and all of those processes that we are doing manually. So when you find something here, you update all of the, your tools. 
When you find something here, which is web application firewall, you again update all of your rules. But from penetration tests, you also update your web application firewall because some of the issues can be remediated on the web application firewall. And that doesn't mean you don't report it to the development team. You do, and you should do, because this should be fixed on the code level. But at least for the time of, the, of fixing, you, you have a web application firewall which will secure your application from the malicious, malicious uh, content, right? So that is what I what I mean by feedback loop in DevSecOps. And that's what I would like everyone to consider or at least think about if there is any, any improvement to the process that you can make. And saying that you have DevSecOps because you introduced Truffle Hook or you introduced some other security scan is not enough. And coming from this, uh, we worked with development teams and we tried to figure out what can be the cooperation program or framework with different development teams. And what I, what I would like to say is that there are a couple, uh, couple of phases in the development process that every team has, which is that there is initiative, there is grooming of this initiative, there is planning of uh, this initiative to have features implemented. Then there is a development of the features and then there is testing. Of course, then is deployment, monitoring, and so on. And again, next next feature. But just, just to the testing where you can be as a security team. So in the grooming part, you can help with the architecture, with all the threat modeling. Uh, you can provide guidelines for the team to have like, uh, you know, secure Kafka deployment or secure Docker, Docker deployment, or uh, what is the uh, requirement for AWS configuration. Then in the planning phase, you can review that if this is achieved, how to improve uh, how to improve the architecture. And if you see the architecture is good, you are doing sign off, okay, you can go ahead and implement. When the implementation is, uh, is coming, uh, development teams have a lot of questions, sometimes uh, very security related questions, how to do uh, encryption, how to do something. So you're a consultant, you are helping them. Uh, this is for the internal security team, of course, because for external, probably it works pretty uh, pretty different. And then testing is obvious, right? You are doing your security testing, you are signing off. Okay, you can go to you can go to production and to not do penetration test every time. You can do a dust. You can do some security configuration checks and compliance checks, and you sign off based on the based on the automation. And you do just penetration test once a year or twice a year. And that's all that I had for you. I think I'm just on time.